Title update number 5 is going to be a huge update for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Not only because of Amatsu, recent Shigaru Magala and all the other additions, but also because of all of these huge changes that are going to be made to the weapons and as such today I'm going to be checking out the biggest winners and losers of the patch by seeing how Capcom has changed all of the weapons in the game. Without any further ado, let's get into it. So starting off with the main additions and changes, there's going to be new story elements. A new monster has been added and will appear in Gathering Hub quests, of course we're talking about Amatsu here. New afflicted monsters and a new risen elder dragon have been added to the game. Of course we're talking about Shagaru Magalo here. Oh this is a cool detail. Special investigations has been added as a final difficulty level for anomaly investigations. And of course, as we talked about in the previous video, you're going to need to do an anomaly investigation of level 300 in order to unlock a special investigation. A wider variety of monsters now appear on anomaly investigations. That is very cool because the worst part about anomaly investigations and the grind that comes with it is that you often have to face the same monsters over and over again so a bigger variety is always good. New weapons, armor and layer equipment and skills have been added, just what we expected. The level cap for armor upgrades has been increased. I always forget to upgrade my armor pieces whenever we get a new update, so I'll be sure to do that as soon as we get title update 5, so I don't get one shot by Amatsu and the risen Shagaru Magala. Now let's get into the buffs and nerfs, I expect to see some huge things here. And we're starting off with the Greatsword, increase the power and elemental correction value for the Greatsword's Falling Slash, Vortex Slash and Rising Slash in the Surge Slash combo. I love this buff, the Surge Slash combo was a very good addition to Sunbreak to give you an entirely new playstyle to the weapon and while it wasn't as characteristic or as defining of the playstyle of the Greatsword in Sunbreak as the counter is, it is still a very fun playstyle to use but it was quite underpowered when compared to the counter playstyle. But seeing that many of these combo routes are going to be buffed, well that's just nice and I hope that they do get buffed by a lot. Increase the power of the Greatsword's adamant charge slash. This is a very good buff and I'm surprised that this is the buff they're giving to Greatsword because this proves that the people in charge of these buffs do have some good insight onto these weapons because what a lot of players were doing is of course not using adamant charge slash just trying to get the counter and going to true charge slash. Hopefully this buff will now make it actually worth it for players to do an adamant charge slash before they counter and go into the true charge slash. And a good buff for rage slash as well, reducing the amount of damage taken while it is charging. Rage slash has essentially become an obsolete option because of the counter, so it is good that they are buffing rage slash so it becomes a viable option. And now it's time for the longsword, oh boy. The harvest moon has been changed. They have increased the radius of the circle that spawns, okay. Remove the sheathing of the weapon as a condition for cancelling the effect, that is huge actually. Players no longer will be knocked back when touching the ring, that is also huge. Decrease the cooldown and slightly increase the height of the display position of the circle. So the last one is the quality of life effect, but these are huge buffs for the longsword. Almost no one has been using Harvest Moon except for very very good longsword users that are able to abuse it because more often than not you will use Harvest Moon and the monster just isn't going to be in the circle or sometimes you KO the monster and because he isn't attacking you, you're not taking advantage of the benefit of Harvest Moon because you're not countering anything. The fact that you're able to sheath your weapon while Harvest Moon is in effect is an insane buff. I cannot wait to see what Longsword players are going to do with this buff, this is insane. Now to be fair, Longsword has not been overpowered in Sunbreak like it was in Rise. I know a lot of players still have that notion, the weapon is quite balanced as it is right now. But with this buff it's going to be absolutely insane and I cannot wait to see it. Now we go into the sword and shield, fixed a bug causing the sword and shield jumping slash to combo into rising slash instead of a round slash if performed right after landing. Ok that's a nice quality of life improvement. Now we get to the dual blades. Increase the power and elemental correction value for the dual blades demon flurry rush and lunging strike. 
Okay, that is quite nice, because what was happening was people were using the aerial mode of the dual blades, but they were not engaging with anything else of the weapon, at least that was the optimal way to play the weapon in Sunbreak. So it's good to see that we're getting these buffs, just so that the rest of the options available for dual blades actually become good, and increase the elemental correction value for the dual blades side slash combo. The slide slash combo was an addition in Sunbreak that didn't really see much use, it's a bit flashy, but you don't really need it to be honest, and because, again, players were using for the most part the aerial playstyle of the dual blades, you were never at risk of getting hit, so the advantage of the slide slash combo being able to dodge attacks was never really a benefit you were going to take advantage of, so a very good change. Change the effect duration of the lenses and courage from 20 to 30 seconds, very nice buff, nothing overpowered, but a nice quality of life upgrade. No longer needing to reapply the buff is quite nice, and you can focus on doing more damage with the weapon. Increase the power of the Gunlance Worm Stake Cannon, normal, long and wide. Very, very, very good buff for the Gunlance. And increase the power of the Gunlance's shelling. Oh, this is only for the wide version, okay. But it is still a nice buff. Again, I don't know why they are always so conservative with Gunlance buffs, but we don't have access to the values of the actual buffs and nerfs that are posted here in the patch notes, which is always something that irks me about these patch notes in Monster Hunter. So we don't know how good of a buff this is actually going to be, but in theory it's going to be a nice buff that is only going to make Gunlance feel more relevant because Lord knows it needs it. Increase the elemental correction value for the hammers charged bang and big bang finisher. I don't think this is going to be all that powerful. The way I've seen speedrunners use the weapon doesn't really take advantage of these buffs, at least I don't think so, but hopefully for players that do use the charged big bang, this might actually be a nice buff. Change the effect duration of the hunting horn siltbind shockwave from 30 to 45 seconds. Thank you. Having to reapply the shockwave was always a bit annoying, especially considering how much you want to use the wire bugs on the hunting horn, so this is going to be a very good buff for the hunting horn. Added a damage reduction effect to the hunting horn's sonic barrier, very nice buff as well, it's not going to be too overpowered. Off the top of my head, I can't think of a lot of hunting horns that actually have sonic barrier, so this is going to be nice. It might actually make some web it might actually make some horns more relevant than the common meta ones, which is always a good change. Adjusted the attack, scaling upward when retrieving all three colors of the extract with the insect glaive. Now the second one can actually be incredibly beneficial, because I feel like the insect glaive somewhat falls behind when you're hunting anomaly investigations, because the monsters have so much more HP, and you constantly have to stop to make the insect attack the monster and mark him. So having more stamina means that you're going to need to do that less times throughout the hunt, and that is always going to be beneficial. And these five paragraphs are just, apart from all of this, there isn't much here in the patch notes that is relevant to talk about, other than a few changes that are going to be beneficial to a lot of players. For example, the number of pages for registering equipment loadouts has been increased, which is always nice, I never use these many, but I like to have at least one page for each weapon, so now you're going to be able to have two pages for each weapon, which is way more than anyone would need. They have also increased the number of anomaly research points the player can earn from anomaly investigations between level 1 and 220. And this increase in points is going to be even larger in quests between level 1 and 120. So this is a very good catch-up mechanic for players that maybe have not played the game in a long while, or they simply haven't interacted much with the anomaly system of the endgame. Because I know that it can be a very daunting system, I have many friends that have stopped playing the game because of these master rank requirements and anomaly investigation level requirements, so hopefully these changes do help in making more players play the actual game. Overall, we got a lot of very meaningful buffs and actually no nerfs. The only nerfs I can tell that we actually got in this patch are pretty much just bug fixes, so there is nothing to worry about on that front. I feel like the longsword buff is going to be absolutely insane, and maybe they could have given a few more buffs to the lance and the gun lance. Other than that, I am very pleased with these patch notes and going into title update 5, I cannot wait to see how this is going to affect the meta for the different weapons. 
Of course, I'm going to be making videos about the different builds, the new skills and all of that, so if you are excited and looking forward to that, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. My name is Dark Hero, thank you all so much for watching and as always, happy hunting!